The Mespalomas bow-legged grasshopper is a species of grasshopper of the family Acrididae. The species is endemic to the town of Mispalomas on Gran Canaria Island, and is considered critically endangered, or almost extinct, since it hasn't been found since 1949. A number of desert-dwelling larks have evolved long bills to aid in digging for food in the sandy environment but the enlarged bill of the Rosso lark has evolved for dominance displays among males. Flocks have also been observed feeding among rocks close to the sea, and the birds excavate holes in sandy soil to extract the small bulbs of net sedges, which are perennial weeds in the sedge family that superficially resemble grasses. The tiny population size, which fluctuates from 200 to 1,000 birds, coupled with the highly skewed sex ratio make this species critically endangered. The reproductive success of the birds is very low, likely due to predation by the near-endemic Cape Verde giant gecko. Although the island is currently free of mammalian predators such as rats or feral cats, and is a closed reserve, the likelihood of a single accidental introduction causing catastrophic damage remains high. The Ebner's skink is only found in two small locations and has not been sighted since 1970. It is threatened by some agricultural practices and habitat loss, and populations presumably continue to decline. The females give birth to live young. It is found in rocky areas near grassy ground cover. The northern bald ibis was once widespread across the Middle East, northern Africa, southern and central Europe, with fossil record dating back at least 1.8 million years. It disappeared from Europe over 300 years ago. The reasons for the species' long-term decline are unclear, but hunting, loss of foraging habitat, and pesticide poisoning have been implicated in the rapid loss of colonies in recent decades. It consumes a very wide variety of mainly animal food. Fecal analysis of the Moroccan breeding population has shown that lizards and tenebrionid beetles predominate in the diet. As with its relative, the West African slender-snouted crocodile has a very long, slender snout that it uses to catch fish. They are relatively medium-sized. They prefer to live in dense, vegetated bodies of water. This species is relatively poorly known with few studies of the wild populations. It appears to have been entirely extirpated from several countries where formerly present and declined elsewhere. In its native range, it is extremely rare and on the verge of disappearing. Captive breeding may be important for conservation of this species. Like other vultures hooded vultures are scavengers, feeding mostly from carcasses of dead animals and waste which they find by soaring over savanna and around human habitation, including waste tips and abattoirs. This vulture is typically unafraid of humans, and frequently gathers around habitation. It is sometimes referred to as the garbage collector by locals. The species has been uplisted from its previous status of endangered to critically endangered, since the species is going through a very steep decline in population, owing to various factors including poisoning, hunting, habitat loss and degradation of habitat. Hunting is the most well-known threat to the species, however, poisoning has been shown to have the highest impact on the population. Poisoning of the species has been both unintentional and intentional, with unintentional poisoning being caused through the poisoning of other animals which the species feeds on. Ruppel's vulture is a large bird of prey, mainly native to the Sahel region and East Africa. The current population of 22,000 is decreasing due to loss of habitat, incidental poisoning, and other factors. Killing of Ruppel's vultures for use in medicine has also greatly contributed to the rapid population decline. 
In many African cultures, vultures are used for medicine and magic related to superstitions that they are clairvoyant and can be used to increase a child's intelligence. Establishing protected wildlife areas is thought to be an effective route to protect the Ruppel's vulture from extinction. The Ruppel's vulture breed in nests in cliffs in northern and southern Kenya, as well as Tanzania. These breeding and nesting grounds amass huge numbers of Ruppel's vultures which will raise young and forage in the surrounding area. Considering that the detection rate of Ruppel's vultures was found to be lower in protected areas than outside of them, extending protection to these key breeding sites could help support their population. The Northwest African cheetah is quite different in appearance from the other African cheetahs. Its coat is shorter and nearly white in color, with spots that fade from black over the spine to light brown on the legs. In the Sahara Desert, daytime temperature exceeds 40 degrees, water is scarce and rainfall irregular. Two camera trapping surveys in the Ahagar Massif revealed that cheetahs in this area exhibit several behavioral adaptations to this harsh climate. They are predominantly nocturnal and active between sunset and early mornings, they travel larger distances and occur at a lower density than cheetahs living in savannas. It is listed as critically endangered. In 2008, the population was suspected to number less than 250 mature individuals. The Dama gazelle does not need a lot of water, but it needs more than other desert animals. It is not as resistant and perishes from a lack of water during the drought season. The environment has become ill-suited for it. Habitat pressure from pastoral activity is another reason for decline, as are introduced diseases from livestock. Another reason for the decline of the Dama gazelle is habitat destruction. Humans cut down the branches of the trees on which this gazelle feeds. As a result, the trees die and the gazelle cannot eat. Human threats are the most dangerous of threats to the Dama gazelle. The main reason this species of gazelle is endangered is because of mechanized hunting, hunters using vehicles increase its decline. Civil unrest, for instance in Sudan, also negatively affects the life of the Dama gazelle. Since the gazelle is already having a hard time surviving, these conditions have made its habitat unsuitable. Due to its slow movements, the addix is an easy target for its predators, humans, lions and African wild dogs. Breeding season is at its peak during winter and early spring. The natural habitat of the addicts are arid regions, semi-deserts and sandy and stony deserts. These animals are mainly nocturnal, particularly in summer. In the day, they dig into the sand in shady locations and rest in these depressions, which also protect them from sandstorms. Scientists believe the addicts has a special lining in its stomach that stores water in pouches to use in times of dehydration. It also produces highly concentrated urine to conserve water. The pale color of the coat reflects radiant heat, and the length and density of the coat helps in thermoregulation. Declines in the population of the addicts have been ongoing since the mid-1800s. More recently, addicts were found from Algeria to Sudan, but due mainly to overhunting, they have become much more restricted and rare. The white-headed vulture is long-lived and appears to be loyal to a territory where it remains resident. Populations have been declining steeply in recent years due to habitat degradation and poisoning of vultures at carcasses. Its main threats are reductions in the availability of suitable food sources and the loss of habitat to the spread of urban and agricultural developments. Poisoning through baits set for other carnivores such as jackals and hyenas, as well as targeted poisoning of vultures. The giant eland, is an open forest and savanna antelope, it is the largest species of antelope. They are alert and wary, making them difficult to approach and observe or to hunt. If a bull senses danger, he will give deep-throated barks while leaving the herd, repeating the process until the whole herd is aware of the danger. Giant elands can move quickly, running at over 70 km per hour, and despite their size are exceptional jumpers. The major threats to the western giant eland population are overhunting for its rich meat and habitat destruction caused by the expansion of human and livestock populations. 
The eastern giant eland is also depleting for similar reasons, and natural causes like continued droughts and competition from domestic animals are contributing to the reduction in numbers. Populations of the eastern giant eland had already gone down due to the rinderpest attacks. The situation was worse during World War II and other civil wars and political conflicts that harmed their natural habitats. Kleinman's tortoise lives in deserts and semi-arid habitats, it is least active when the weather is very cold or very hot. During the colder months, it is out most during midday. During the warm season, it is active in the mornings and evenings. The rest of the day is spent under bushes or in rodent burrows. The species was once more widespread, but its numbers are now dwindling. The species is nearly extinct in Egypt and complete extinction in the wild is a looming threat unless more actions are taken to protect this species. The Djibouti spurfowl is a bird species in the pheasant family. It is critically endangered and found only in Djibouti. Its natural habitat is high-altitude subtropical or tropical dry forest composed primarily of African juniper. However, the juniper forests preferred by the spurfowl are dying, so it may be found in other habitats, such as box tree forest. This bird is only known from two locations in Djibouti, one of which is largely unsurveyed. It can be found in small groups and is extremely shy. It is known to feed on berries, seeds, and termites, and it breeds between December and February. It is considered a critically endangered species because it underwent a 90% population decline in 20 years. The degrading of its juniper habitat through man-made disturbances, such as overgrazing, is a major threat to the spurfowl's survival. Ongoing conservation work includes the restoration of some juniper forest, and surveys to obtain accurate population counts and to raise awareness. The Tora hartebeest is an extremely endangered antelope, native to Eritrea and Ethiopia. One of the most critically endangered large mammals in the world, it is threatened by poaching and habitat loss. Perhaps fewer than 250 individuals remain in the wild and there is no captive population, as little to no action has been taken to preserve them. The African wild ass is primarily active in the cooler hours between late afternoon and early morning, seeking shade and shelter amongst the rocky hills during the day. Wild asses can run swiftly, almost as fast as a horse. However, unlike most hoofed mammals, their tendency is to not flee right away from a potentially dangerous situation, but to investigate first before deciding what to do. Though the species itself is under no threat of extinction, due to abundant domestic stock, the two extant wild subspecies are both listed as critically endangered. African wild asses have been captured for domestication for centuries, and this, along with interbreeding between wild and domestic animals, has caused a distinct decline in population numbers. There are now only a few hundred individuals left in the wild. The eastern black rhino is distinguishable from the southern subspecies as it has a longer, leaner, and more curved horn. Its skin is also very grooved. It is also reportedly more aggressive than the other three subspecies of black rhino. They are browsers and are usually found in highland forest and savanna habitat. The population has declined 90% in the last three generations. In 2010 their total numbers were estimated at 740 animals, with an increasing trend. They are threatened mainly from illegal poaching for their horns. The Bale Mountain Frog natural habitats are grassy banks of small, fast-flowing streams in giant heath woodland and adjoining Schifflera Hagenia forest. It is critically endangered because its range is extremely small and the habitat is under threat from trampling of streams, deforestation, and settlement development, despite being located in the Bale Mountains National Park. The Bale Mountain Tree Frog lives an entire terrestrial life cycle. 
This species is believed to build a terrestrial nest to lay its eggs. The eggs do not undergo an aquatic larval stage, and instead they hatch as smaller versions of the adults. The major threats to this species are habitat degradation, deforestation, and human encroachment. The degradation is mainly due to the growing human population, and the deforestation is due to the collection of firewood. The growth in population leads to overgrazing and agricultural development.